Hey, welcome to today. Uh, I'm going to be talking about EVAP, uh, evaporative emissions. Uh, boy, these things can be really complicated, although they just really operate on, a, on a, some pretty simple systems. There's only a couple of different ways that they do this, and I'll try to explain the two most common ways. <clears throat> First, uh, <clears throat> some parts. Uh, excuse me, uh, gas caps. Uh, it, 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 we don't even use gas caps on a lot of the new vehicles. They have that little flapper they just push out of the way, but they still have the same parts. There's actually two valves inside there. There's, there's an overpressure valve so that if the pressure builds up in the tank too much, it releases, you know, through the cap. Now, usually that's a fault. So if you're taking a gas cap off and you it like rushes out and you hear like a, pfft, you know, that's an issue. And it usually has to do with the EVAP stuff, you know, clogged cans. We'll talk about it. Uh, and then there's also a vacuum one as well. Now, this lets fresh air in as the tank cools. I mean, you know, during that during the day, you know, it gets hot out, the sun shining on it, uh, the gas expands uh, and then you know at night it contracts back down so we need to relieve that pressure so we're talking you know one psi of positive pressure and maybe a half an inch of vacuum which is a very very small amount i mean it's it's tiny if you take the gas cap off and you smell gas you know it like burps out at you that's an issue uh, and then we also have, you know, the, the clicking noise. Usually it's three clicks. You know, you see people in there going, zick, 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 zick. Uh, it's like, oh, please don't do that. Uh, and then gas caps do wear out. They they do. They do fail, too. Uh, and usually it's these, these valves that fail inside. They get crud in them or snow or ice even. You know, uh, sometimes they just need, you know, to be thawed out and then they work fine. But we'll talk about it. Problems with the gas cap, you know, back in the olden days, it would release hydrocarbons into the air, which was bad for pollution. And it would fail an IM240 test, which is old school. Uh, uh, OBD2, uh, all the above, plus a check engine light comes on. So really do we see, rarely do we see uh, an uh, 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 engine drivability problem with an EVAP, although we can get to stalling, which is possible, and, and then canister contamination, which could lead to uh, uh, replacing a very expensive can. Some of those things are six, seven hundred bucks, man. They're, they're expensive. Anyways, filler necks are also important too. Uh, back in the day, they were metal and they would rust out you know a lot of times you'd look up in there and and they'd be rusty and and kind of wet and you could smell gas you know when you like stuck your head in the fender well so uh they can fail they do need to be checked out usually going down into the tank there's usually a fitting right here sometimes it's just held on by a hose clamp which you know sometimes they loosen up sometimes they fall off some Times when the gas tank's been r and they're not put on correctly. So, again, this is something we need to look at. Now, they also have uh, liquid vapor separators. And, and what we have to be very wary of is, is the, the, the filler neck, you know, when it pushes down into the, it, 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 you know, pushes the gasoline down into the tank, the, the tank needs to vent that displaced, air you know it's like filled with air and we're filling up the tank so you know the the fuel level rises and it has to dis you know it has to uh push that vapor off to somewhere well it's filled with hydrocarbons so generally it pushes into the can you know the to the charcoal canister for recycling later on and we'll talk about that but you know you you, you this is why when the gas you know tank you know the gas filler the gas pump when it shuts off you generally should stop filling the gas tank at that point uh problems with the filler neck you know sometimes we have you know rust leaking fuel uh, uh sometimes the unleaded little flapper valve is 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 dropped off into the tank or you know somebody's like busted it out because they see it as being some kind of a problem uh 
emissions controls. <clears throat> this is the EVAP. Now, this is an early picture. Uh, this charcoal canister, and it has these little tiny pellets in it of, of, of like, charcoal. You know, kind of the same thing you use for your Weber. Uh, it, it, and, and it's got you know thousands of microscopic holes in it and that's that's where the hydrocarbons collect so that we can pull them out later now we can we don't want the hc to get out into the atmosphere we want it to be caught up in this charcoal canister so during refueling or while you're driving around any vapors produced get pushed into this charcoal canister now, it, it, it handles vapor, but it can't handle any liquid. If liquid gets in there, it, it kind of melts the charcoal and, and turns it into a lump. So, <clears throat> you know, that, that that would not work. That would not be any good. Okay. And then we have a purging device. Now, some of the old school stuff, we use these, you know, variable or constant purges, uh, but we don't use those anymore. It's all done electronically now, and it's all watched by the computer, although some of the parts are still the same. You know, we still have a canister. Generally, these are in back now since they're so big. We have some way to get to manifold vacuum. We also employ a liquid vapor separator. Sometimes they're inside the tank, okay? So basically what you have is just you know, a place where if any liquid gets up into this piece here, it drains back into the tank and it doesn't get caught up into the vent line that goes up to the canister. Okay. Old school, constant purge. It just constantly had manifold vacuum on it. There was a very small orifice that just constantly drew fresh air through this through this air inlet, through this vent on the bottom of the canister, and any vapors that were, you know, sloshed around and made were, were pushed up into the can. Uh, so this is just a straight metered orifice or a vacuum leak, basically. Uh, variable purge, we just added, you know, a, another line to it. These still worked exactly the same way. The electronic purge, this is the, the modern ones. So we actually have a purge solenoid. Now this purge solenoid goes between manifold vacuum, the intake manifold, and the outlet of the, the charcoal canister. Now here's my line coming from the tank, and it had a fresh air inlet. Okay, so it would see when it saw an opportunity to purge, it would purge and ground the solenoid. Uh, when would it do this? Well, it, it would do this generally, you know, anytime it had an opportunity, it would purge a little bit. And then we would watch the uh, O2 sensor. So the, the, the computer would purge the canister and it'd see the O2 sensor switch rich. Then the computer knew that there was still some fuel in the canister. So it would purge, purge, purge until the O2 sensor read lean. And then it, the computer would say, okay, done purging now because I've emptied the canister. Get it? Now, new stuff, the OBD2 stuff. We need to check for, you know, I mean, the purging is still done the same, but we have to test to make sure that the system can seal. So rather than just venting straight out to fresh air, what they would do is they put a vent solenoid on. So you got a purge solenoid that takes the hydrocarbons out of the EVAP puts it in the engine to be burned. And then we have a vent one that's that, that the computer can open and close when it wants to. We okay? So uh, pressurized system. This is one of the very common ones. This is a Chrysler system. It actually has a little pump. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can put up a, a, a video on it uh, on how this works because it makes much more sense if, if you see it. But basically what it does is, is this is this is a diaphragm and we're using the engine vacuum to pump this diaphragm up and down. And then there's two one way valves that allows it to pump pressure into the gas tank. So, uh, you know, it pumps pressure. It knows how much gas is in here. So it knows exactly how much space is in here. It knows how much 
how many pumps it should take to start seeing a positive pressure. And when it starts seeing positive pressure, this guy doesn't pump as far. When it's fully pumped up to pressure, this guy doesn't pump at all. Get it? Because it's going gonna... to... It starts building up pressure. It makes it harder for it to pump. So once it un... uh, overcomes that, it starts a, a timer. Okay? And it, and it watches how long it takes for this guy to fall back down and be able to pump again. It's a positive pressure system. Okay, vacuum pressure. This is by far the most common. It's GM, Ford, a bunch of other ones use this. Uh, uh, I think it's Hondas. Uh, anyways, so they use vacuum to check for a leak. So instead of being a positive pressure, this is a negative pressure. So basically all they do is they turn off, hang on, where is it? Here is my vent solenoid, and here is my purge solenoid. Purge solenoid is hooked up to manifold vacuum. So if I close this fresh air inlet, which is normally open, okay, if I close this and I open this to manifold vacuum while the engine is running, that puts this whole thing in a negative pressure. And then there's a pressure sensor, three wires, power ground signal, five volts generally, <clears throat> that monitors the pressure inside the tank. And that, in turn, can tell whether or not the system is sealed or not. Now, we can do like a fine testing where, you know, we'll, we'll uh, you know, just close the, the vent valve and, and close the purge valve while the engines will, like, while you're running down the highway. And it'll watch for the, you know, the gas being used, the, 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 the level in the tank will drop, causing a vacuum that that pressure sensor will see. <clears throat> or it can go to a more coarse testing where, you know, it can, open the vent valve, close, close, close the vent valve, open the purge valve, cause a negative pressure inside the tank very quickly that, that the, the pressure sensor can see you know, and, and say, oh, hey, there you go. Now, we've had, it has happened, where uh, these guys, 